Ooh, oh boy. So Ohio State is going all. I mean, they are freaking loaded. They are loaded. They, they all Ryan they did in his style. They say, "What we missing from last? Oh, did, we ain't have a good enough quarterback. Finna go get me two, three, four, five of them. Oh, we ain't got enough receivers. Let me go get them. Oh, we need some defense. Let me go get uh Caleb Downs. What we need? Oh, we oh we need an OC. Let me go get Chip Kelly. Let's get after it. Let's get it. Uh, okay, let's get into everything that's gone on here. And man, it's just like a never a dull moment. The off season in college football has become a little bit like the off season. Um, in the in the National Football League in that there is no offseason and there were huge moves and we we talked all about it Bill O'Brien was hired as the offensive coordinator at Ohio State Ryan Day basically saying hey listen this job is too big I need somebody to handle the offense and call plays I need to go out and, and really handle NIL I need to really handle fundraising and, hey, and that's real um, being the head coach in today's college football it's trending more so. Hey, man, it was what? Well, oh, correction. It has always been who can be the best recruiters, because that's how Nick Saban and Kirby Smart and 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 Harbaugh, not John, Jim, Jim Harbaugh. That's how they made their legacy at the college football level. They've been the best recruiters. So, being the signal caller and all that stuff is cool. Like Jim Harbaugh did an amazing job. I think he called the plays for Michigan. Him and Sharon Moore did a good job, but. Today, you got to get the players, especially with NIL. NIL is changing the game, and I think it's changing it for the better. Uh, coaches can no longer stockpile players, uh, you know, unrelentlessly. They, they have to pay these dudes. They have, to, they have to pay them, and you have to treat them well. You can pay these dudes all kind of money, all types of bread. But if you hurt their feelings, they out of there. And ain't nothing you can do about it. So now you, you, can't just, you can't just mule these players out max out their potential and then throw them away into the trash you can't do it no more now you got to treat these now you got to treat these men like men because they can hey man at any, at any moment they can exercise their option to get up out of there and and do all of these things that maybe he didn't want to do but he certainly has to do in order to evolve with the sport and become uh kind of the program that they want to become so he hires bill o'brien great okay great okay so bill o'brien comes in and and I was told that the offensive coordinator was going to have final say even on the offensive staff. So there was a lot of autonomy that an agency that, that Bill O'Brien had at Ohio State uh, to go in there and kind of make it his own. And, and Ryan delegated that to him. So that was a huge move for Ryan Day. And then all of a sudden, Jeff Halfley, the head coach at Boston College, decides, you know what? College football is crazy. I'm out of here. I'm going to the National Football League, and he takes the defensive coordinator job with the Green Bay Packers. Well, now all of a sudden, what does that leave? An opening at Boston College. And guess what? The best fit for the job just happened to be Bill O'Brien. So Bill O'Brien is leaving, and he's going to take the job. Hold on. I've been writing a lot of IEPs. I'm a special education. Did he just get to Ohio State? I could have swore he just did he just get to Ohio State? He already hey man, y'all hey man, I got a hey man, I got I got like three, four, five more weeks of IEPs, right? So I may miss a couple of things. So y'all let me know. Did he did he leave for real? There in Boston College. He really he really he just got there. I could have swore they was everybody talking Bill O'Brien this, Bill O'Brien that, and this dude came in and got up out of there. That's crazy. Three weeks on the job in Columbus. Now he's oh, yeah. Three weeks. I like, bro. I know. I just covered this story about Bill O'Brien and now the dude go. That's crazy. Gonna take the job at Boston College. It makes all all the sense in the world. He's a Boston native, ties to the area, two sons, one with coached in New England, had a lot of success in New England. I'm not the biggest fan of Bill O'Brien. I think Boston College may be the the best move for him overall because he ain't a lot of pressure there to come in and win. So. I guess I ain't the biggest fan of Bill O'Brien, but you do have to respect what he has been able to do both in the NFL and at the college level. So, you know, hats off to him, man. Congrats to Boston College. With a rare neurological disorder that basically, you know, his care is best in that area. He's got another son that's the best baseball player at Tufts. That's in the Boston area. So it's like, even Ryan Day is probably like, yeah, I mean, that, that makes a lot of sense and good for him. Okay. So good. So good for him. And that's a good hire for Boston College. It really is. I think it's a tough job. I think Jeff Halfley did a, a pretty good job. And now Bill O'Brien's got that job. So Bill wanted to be a head coach, and now he's a head coach. And people 
minimize the fact of home roots, homegrown. In most cases, and I've said this a lot on Twitter when I'm in here battling them with all these scam recruiting services and all that stuff, man. People discount the power of the hometown. Most recruits that sign out of state, the first chance they get to come back home, they're coming back home. Same thing applies for coaches. Every chance Bill O'Brien has got to come back, come back home, close to his family where he grew up and he got family and kids and a son with a rare disorder, he's going to take it. Same thing with these kids. So I don't, know why, I don't even know why I said that, but I said that. Let's go. <laughs> Ouch. So good for him. But that leaves now the coordinator job open at Ohio State. And it was already such a big hurdle in the first place to kind of like get over the hump of Ryan Day saying, I'm not going to call the plays. I'm going to delegate. I'm going to do all these things that I think we need to do to evolve in order to beat Michigan, win the Big Ten, and eventually hopefully win the national championship. And now you're at square one. So what do you do? Well, when you're at square one, when your back is against the wall, you tend to lean on things that you know. And that you can trust. There is not a person in this business that Ryan Day trusts more than Chip Kelly. And now Chip Kelly is going to leave UCLA as their head coach. And in the same conference, I know that sounds weird, leave to take the offensive coordinator position at Ohio State under Ryan Day. And that was... When I when I was reading the news the, the other day about Chip Kelly to Ohio State, I'm like, what? Um, what? He hasn't done. I don't like. He hasn't done anything at UCLA that would warrant him having to drop down and because technically you dropping down in position. I don't know if anything happened to UCLA. I ain't trying to say anything did, but most people don't willingly take a OC job when they have a head coaching spot. And now you're taking a pay cut you I don't know I don't know what UCLA was paying them y'all let me know I'm not a UCLA fan but I love football so we covering this story so I don't know what UCLA was paying them uh but I know it was more than he gonna get as an OC at least on on I mean I don't know what they're doing under the table to pay this dude but you talking about some M's he walking away from M's to take a couple hundred thousand so I don't know some coordinators may be getting some good change some good pocket change but I ain't turning down them M's for a couple hundred thousand. I ain't even do it. Unless something about to come down the pipe or he done ruffle some feathers or, hey, man, like I said before, Ohio State is all going all the way in. I think Chip Kelly may potentially see an opportunity. Hey, man, I can, I can come in here, win a, uh, come in here, compete, maybe win a national championship in a year, and then I can go back. I can go back into the market, into the head coaching market, and pick up more money and maybe even a better team. So it's interesting, man. It's, it's definitely interesting. Quite wild. But as soon as Bill O'Brien left, years. That's not easy to do, in particular with what was going on in the Pac-12 over the last couple of years. Over the last couple of years, that conference was deep. There was a lot of teams playing at a high level, a very high level. And Chip did a pretty good job. People in Westwood would not have it. And I got crushed for defending Chip Kelly and saying, like, hey, you know, like, Chip's done a good job. What do you mean he's done a good job? Blah, blah, blah. Okay, fine, fine. You know what? And Chip even had, didn't want any part of it. Now, part of this is, is that I also believe that two things can be true at once. I think Chip did a good job and rebuilt that program in a lot of ways so that they can potentially have success moving forward. But at the same time, you could also see that Chip wasn't long for a head coaching position at the, at the college level. He did not like what the sport had become and what he was going to have to do to have success in the sport as a head coach. Okay? I, I don't think Chip loved recruiting. I think that that's pretty widely known. And the rankings reflected that. You know, UCLA historically has recruited, I would say, at a, at a higher clip than what Chip was recruiting over the last few years. All the Bruin fans would, would agree with that. See, now that now that makes a little bit more sense. Cause I just asked the question. I said, why would you take a – why would you leave a head coaching job to go be an OC? Now, what Joel, Joel Clatt just said, what my boy just said, 
makes a lot of sense. If I don't want to deal with be the you know be the spokesman for this team and be responsible for recruiting and and everything like that, and if I just want to just call plays and and focus all my energy into doing that, then that makes a ton of sense. That makes a lot of sense. So now that makes sense. I got to, you know, and with him and Chip Kelly, like he said, I, I had to go look it up, but UCLA has won like eight games every year over the last couple of years. So the production is there, the talent is there. Well, the production is there, the wins are there. So maybe he does just want to call plays. Maybe he doesn't want to deal with all the – the recruiting stuff, we seen a lot of coach. We just saw Nick Saban step down and retire. We a lot of people believe it. That had a lot a lot of things to do with recruiting. Um and, and all you and, and it pretty much turned into like the developmental league for the NFL. And many of the same issues that plagued a lot of these uh college coaches when they was in the NFL was salary caps and maintaining, you know, egos and money and blah 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 blah. blah, blah. But only difference is in NFL, you get to draft people, <laughs> and you get to go get free agents. Now you just you just pretty much everybody's a free agent, so you have to build your entire roster through collegiate free agency, and that's tough. That's tough. You got to know how to talk to people. You can't just talk to people any kind of way. You can't lie to them because as soon as you lie to them, they're going to go to social media and say, you lied, and now you're going to look bad. Now your name uh, stepped on. So Now, his success on the field I thought was was pretty good. I don't think he wanted to sit there and focus on NIL and the transfer portal and recruiting his own kids and recruiting kids out of the transfer portal and then trying to fight the NIL battles with fundraising and booster support at UCLA that have traditionally been very difficult going all the way back. You know, whether it's the legendary Terry Donahue or Rick Neuheisel or whomever it was, Jim Mora, it, it's always been a place where if I go cover that sport or if I'm around or uh, cover that team and program or from around that program, they're always talking about like, man, you know, it's, it's so hard here. We don't have the resources. We don't have the X, Y, or Z. Now, you know, they built a new facility. I think it's, it's better than it has been, but I don't think Chip wanted to dive into that world. What Ryan is doing, let's just put it this way. What Ryan Day is doing at Ohio State, I don't think Chip wanted to do that. He's a ball coach. He just wants to coach football. Hey, I just said that. And I don't know, you know, I've, I've watched Chip Kelly at the Eagle. I thought he did a good job with the Eagle. That offense is just, his offense is crazy. You got me in great shape, but. And you know what? We got, we have to give Coach Prime his flowers because he's he been ahead of the game. He came into the FBS level and said, hey, man, I'm mainly going to focus on recruiting. Uh, bringing this good energy to this program, and I'm gonna I'm hire the right people. Though. I'm gonna I'm hire me an OC. I'm gonna find me a DC. I can find. I can get you the players. I just need people to line it up. I just need people to draw it. Up. I'm gonna get you the players. So everybody's not built for today's coaching, and we're and we're seeing some of the best coaches to ever play this game stepping down or taking a smaller position just because they only want to deal with the football part, and that's okay. That's absolutely fine. That's okay. If you don't want to deal with the recruiting, like me personally, I think this is this game is probably tailor made for me right now. Cause, but I do this recruiting thing. I can go find me some dogs. I'm gonna find me some dogs, boy. That's all I do is talk junk on Twitter to everybody. Like, hey, bro, I'm gonna find me some dogs. I'm gonna find me some dogs. So I can find you some guys. I just need some guys that's gonna that can dial it up for me. That can set it up for me. And we you know I can bring that energy. We gonna talk junk. We gonna have fun, and we gonna win. So shout out to Coach Prime. There we go. He tried to get into the NFL. He interviewed with the Seattle Seahawks. Didn't get that. Ryan Grubb gets that job. More on that in a little bit. And now he can go work for basically his, I would call them best friends in the profession. Maybe overall. Obviously, they have history. Chip coached Ryan Day at New Hampshire. You know, this, this relationship goes back a long ways. And it, it makes all the sense in the world. There's nobody that Ryan trusts more in this sport than, than Chip Kelly. And now... This this new play calling system at Ohio State is going to have Chip Kelly at the helm. And boy, does he have a lot of toys to play with at Ohio State. And I don't even like Ohio State. I'm, I'm a Georgia boy. I'm a Georgia fan. But hey, bro, I can't. They went in. They went and flipped uh, or stole Caleb down. I just knew he was coming back home to Georgia, and they flipped him and got him. And they went. They got all these players returning back from. They could have went to the NFL. They said we're gonna come back for another year, coach, because we wanna we wanna win this thing. We wanna give it another shot. They got a bunch of transfers coming in. They got 
they just got Chip Kelly, Bill O'Brien. It must like I said, I don't like Bill O'Brien like that. You know, I respect him. I just like oh, man. When they when they hire, I said like, eh, I don't know. But Chip Kelly as an OC, now nah, I like that hire. Now nah, you know I like that hire, especially with the weapons that they have, and mainly because of this. I know everybody hyping up, not hyping up, but I know everybody like Will Howard and Julian saying, but Aaron Nolan will be a great fit for the Chip Kelly offense. He will be an amazing fit for Chip Kelly. And I think with Chip Kelly coming into that offense, we are most likely going to see Aaron Nolan win out that battle at the, with the 2024s. You know, so I don't know, you know, Will Howard may get the start could potentially. But Will Howard may not fit Chip Kelly's offense. So let's finish it up. He's going to have his old offensive line coach that came from UCLA, Justin Fry. So they're going to be back together. And and one thing that I'm looking at is like Chip can go there and he's like, oh, I'm sorry, wait, wait, wait. So you're going to give me a mobile quarterback, the best backfield in the, in the country with, with Junkins and, and Henderson. You're going to give me a Mecca Abuka and Carnell Tate. Like, and I get to call plays. I think Ohio State will become a better running team. Chip Kelly rushes the football as well as anybody in the country, as well as anybody. That's what UCLA did, and I think Ohio State is going to lean into that a little bit more. Remember, over the last three years, part of what has gotten them beat against Michigan is the running game is that Michigan was the better fundamentally sound running team. Right. Having to Facts. stop their run was very difficult. They could Facts. control the clock and they could control Facts. the game. I'm, I ain't gonna stop. And now you keep all of going. a sudden, you've got Chip Kelly. Last year, Ohio State was 88th in the country running the football. I think that needs to get better. I think that needs to get better. And, and I agree because I, when they was in the, the playoffs, well, not the playoffs, when they got eventually beat by uh, Michigan and all that stuff, everybody was saying. Uh, well, our offensive line needs to block better. Our, our running backs need to do this, do that. Y'all ain't been a running team all season. <laughs> Y'all ain't been a running team all season. Now, all of a sudden, when it's two two versus three, you expect the Ohio State to be something they haven't been all season. Y'all have been primarily a passing team all season. But and what we know, when it comes when the rubber needs to meet the road, you got to be able to run that football. You got to now. Obviously, with guys like Patrick Mahomes and uh, Josh Allen, you know, you can, you know, Burrow and, you know, all these other quarterbacks in the league that, you know, Penix and Shador, you know, you can throw, you can throw that thing, but you got to be able to support, to support your great quarterbacks with the running game. We saw what happened to Shador. We saw what happened to Caleb Williams. We saw, we saw all these great quarterbacks get beat or lose at different points in the season because, you couldn't run the ball. It was one point where Colorado was in the negative. <laughs> like, they was negative 500 yards rushing as a team. You ain't going to win with that. You, you need great quarterback play, but you need a complimentary running game. It don't have to be the best. It don't have to be the best. But it needs to be complimentary. I need to be able to get two, three, four, maybe a five-yard yard pop here and there so we can play that, that down the distance so we can take some of that pressure off our quarterback, and it keeps the defense from teeing off on you every play.